Welcome everyone to part three of my tutorial series on how to create this Tatooine environment scene in Blender. So this is where we left off in part two. So in part one, we made like the environment, we made the ground, we also added the sun and the HDRI. And then in part two, we created the moisture vaporator. And in this part, we're going to be creating all the houses in the scene. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna press Shift C to make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center here. And then let's add the object for the first house. So I'm gonna start by just making that kind of like square house. So I'm gonna press Shift A and we're gonna add a cube because a cube is pretty close to the shape. I'm now gonna press G to grab Z on the Z axis and we'll just bring this up just because I wanna kinda of move it out of the way so we can make the house right up here. And I also wanna scale up this house so let's scale it up quite a bit. Something like that, we can always scale it later and make it the correct size. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode now and I'm gonna press three to go to the face select. Then I'm going to just select this face and I'll press S to scale because we wanna scale it down a little bit so that the top of the house is a little bit smaller than the bottom. And then I'll also press G and Z and just kind of bring this down and scale it down just a little bit. All right, and then I kind of want to add a barrier kind of thing on the top of the house. So I'm just going to select this and we're going to press I to inset. We'll just bring it down a little bit. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and we'll just bring that up a little bit. Then I'll press I again to inset this and we'll inset it a bit. All right, just a little bit like that. And then I'll, um, I'm gonna press one to go back to front view, Z for wireframe. And I'll just press E to extrude and just bring it down so that it's kind of flat right there. So it's kind of the same. And there we go, so that is the top of it. Now I also want to make like a door on the front. So let's do that. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I wanna add some loop cuts in here for the door. So I'm going to press Control R and then I want to add two of them so we can make the door. So I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up so that we have two and then I'll just left click and right click to place it in the center. And then I also want to make the top of the door. So I'll press Control R, add a loop cut right here and just kind of bring it up. And this uh, is going to be the top of the door and then also the top of the window that we're going to be adding over here. And because we're going to be adding a window, let's also just press Control R and then click and make like where the window is gonna be. So I just want the window to be like maybe that big. And then we also need to add some loop cuts over here for the window, so we might as well do that now. So I'm gonna press Control R, click and drag over, just kind of place the window there. So the window is gonna be kind of right here. So let's add another loop cut. So Control R, click, bring it over. Now you can see that the window is kind of slanted and I want it to be slanting out both sides. So to fix this, I'm gonna press S to scale and Y on the Y axis and we'll just flip this over just like that, and then click to place that. So now the window is kind of going to be going down like that and then getting smaller as it goes up. So that is great. So we'll come back to this later. Let's do the door. So I'm going to press three for the face select, and then I'm going to select the two pieces of the door, and I'll press X, and then we'll just delete the faces. Now the bottom here, we're also not going to need these, so I'm just going to hold down the shift key, select all the bottom faces, and then just press X and delete faces. And then I'm going to press one to go to the vertex select. We're just going to select this loop of vertices. So just hold down the alt key and just click right there, and that's going to select the loop of vertices. And then I will press E to extrude, and Y on the Y axis, we'll just kind of bring it back a little bit, and then we will be adding a actual door there. So just bring that back a little bit. All right, and then I want this part to be rounded right in here. So I'm going to select this and then shift select this, and then we can press Control B, and Control B is going to add a bevel. So we can now bevel this out, and then also um, if you wanna add more geometry, you can scroll with your scroll wheel, and just add more. So I'm just gonna scroll wheel my mouse five times. And then I also want both sides to be exactly the same. So I'm gonna type in 0.2 and then hit enter. So that way it's just bringing this out by 0.2. So we can do the exact same thing over here. So I'm gonna click on this, shift click on this. We're gonna press control B and it's already gonna be set to five. And then just type in 0.2 enter. And there we go, now they're the exact, now they're, the angle is exactly the same. And then I also wanna add a bevel to this object because it is pretty sharp on some of these areas. So let's click on add modifier and let's add the bevel modifier. We can turn these segments up to maybe four and then also the amount, we need to turn this down a little bit. And then there is the angle there, the limit method, and that is what we want because we don't want it to be beveling each piece here. We just want it to be beveling those bigger spots. So now we can just shade this object smooth and there we go, looking very nice. Now let's tap back into edit mode and uh, we need to make the window. So I'm gonna press three 
to go to the face select. We'll just select this face. I'll press E to extrude, and we're just gonna bring this back in. So there's the window. And then I want to scale this up and then delete the face in there. So let's actually go inside the house, and I will press E to extrude, and then S to scale immediately after that. We'll just scale this up, and then I can just press X and delete faces. So there we go. You know, if you want to go ahead and model what's inside the house, you can. I don't really want to, so I'm just going to do that, and it'll look great from the outside. And then there also is like a sci-fi piece coming out here when I was looking at reference images, so I'm going to add this in. So I'm going to press Shift-A. We're going to add a cube, and I'm doing this in edit mode, and that way it's a part of this object, and the cube also has the bevel modifier already on it. You can see it has the bevel modifier. So we can just bring this over here, and then we'll just press S to scale. Y on the Y axis and just kind of scale this down, G and Z, kind of bring this up. And then let's press three to go to the face select. I'm just gonna select this face and I'll press G and Z and just bring it down. And then I'll press E to extrude, bring it up, just about the size of the window, just how high the window is. And then I'll press G and X on the X axis and we'll just bring it back a little bit, just like that. So there we go, now we have that cool look. And if you wanna move the entire thing, you can press L and that'll select all the linked vertices, hover your mouse over that and press L and then you can press G to grab and pull it out a little bit, maybe bring this face back in a little bit. And then also this face, I can just press X and delete faces because we're not going to see it. All right, and then let's also make the door and then the door is going to be a separate object. So I'm just going to tab back into edit mode. I'm just going to press one to go to the vertex select. I'm just gonna hold down the alt key and select this ring of vertices and then I'm going to need to hold down the shift and alt key and select this ring of vertices. So now we have all these selected but we need to select the ones over here. So again hold down the shift and alt key select this and this as well. Okay there we go that those are what I wanted to select. So I'll now press shift D and then immediately after that press S and scale it up a little bit and then we want to make this a separate object because we want it to be a different object for the door. So I'm going to press P and P is the shortcut key for separating and we're going to separate by selection. So we can now tab back into object mode, click on this object and tab into edit mode and then I can select everything and just press F to fill that. And then let's move this door in. So I'm gonna press G to grab, Y on the Y axis. We'll just kind of push this in. I'm just gonna push it in that much and then we'll go back into object mode. And then the normals need to be recalculated on the door because the door is kind of flipped. You can see the shading is a little bit off. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and press Shift N. And Shift N didn't do anything. So right behind me, the recalculate normals, you need to click on the inside. It's right behind me, the inside button. And there we go. Now the shading looks correct because it's the same color as this face right here. All right, so that is great. And that's pretty much done. So now we can go ahead and make the materials for the house and then also make the material for the door. So to do the materials, I'm just gonna click right over here on the shading tab. All right, so let's just click on the house and then we're just gonna click on new. And we can just call this like house material, you can call it sand or rock, whatever you want to do. So I've turned on the node wrangler. I have talked about this in the earlier parts of the series. So I have the node wrangler add on turned on. So with that add on turned on, I can press control shift T with the principal BSDF selected. So control shift T, and then that'll take us to the file browser. And we're just going to go out here. And then let me just make sure this is the correct one. Here it is. So I'll have a link in the video description to the ground 029. This is from Ambient CG. And then when you unzip the zip file after you've downloaded the texture, it might come with a few other textures. I just want to use the roughness, normal, and color. So I'm just going to select those. And then you can just click on principled texture setup, and it's automatically going to set up the texture for us. Now, again, I want to use that easy texturing method that I like to use. So what I'm going to do is set the object to the vector, just like that. And then on the textures right here, we just need to set the flat to box, and then the blend, something around 0.2, flat to box, and the blend 0.2, and then the last one right down here, flat to box, and the blend value 0.2, and there we go. Now you can see it's very nicely and evenly put the texture on our object. And then if you wanna change the scale of it, the scale is right down here, so you can just click drag down, and then you can drag back and forth and change the scale. Just change that to whatever it looks good. And then just like we did with this material, I also want to add the ambient occlusion because I think it just looks really nice. It adds a lot to the material, kind of makes it look more grungy and old and dirty. So I'm gonna click on this material. Let's press Shift A, and I'm going to add the ambient occlusion node. 
we'll just drop it down here. And then we need to mix these together. So I'm gonna press Shift A. Let's just add a mix RGB. We'll drop this down here. And then the ambient occlusion, the color is gonna go into the factor. And then this base color needs to go into color two. And then color one is just gonna be a dark brown color because this is where the grunge and the dirt is going to be kind of in the cracks. And then I want to make the ambient occlusion a little bit more strong. So I'm going to press shift A and search for a color ramp. We'll just drop the color ramp in here and then I can control shift and click on it. And we can preview what it's doing. So it is working, but it needs to be stronger because you can see it's kind of just a little bit gray here. So I'm going to actually pull this out to make it a bit darker. That is better. Just make it how strong you want, something like that. And then I can control shift and click on this. So you can see there it is. It's making kind of those darker places so here it is before and then here it is after it really does add a lot to the material and there we go looking really nice so now let's do the material for the door so i kind of want to make this look like a metal sci-fi door so i'm going to click on new here i'm going to call this door and then i want to make the door look like it has some metal pieces that are kind of coming out so what i'm going to do to do this is i'll press shift a and i'm going to search for the brick texture i'm just going to add this down here so what we're going to do is we're going to use this brick texture as the normal so i'm also going to press Control t on the brick texture and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and then I can control shift and click on this so color two we also want to make this fully white and then color one we want to make fully white as well and then the mortar we want to make that black and then let's turn the brick width way up so that they actually don't look like bricks they actually just look like stripes and then we don't want them to be going sideways we want them to be going up and down so right here on the mapping the Z rotation we can type in 90 enter and now it's going to be going up and down and then also I think we should scale this up a little bit because I don't want it to be quite that many and then the mortar smooth let's turn that up just so that's a little bit more smooth and then also turn up the mortar size so that is what I'm going for um, let's also just like scale the whole thing up a little bit with the scale value right here kind of scale that up I don't want too many of them so that's good and then I want to also bring them down a little bit so you can't see those things right here on the ground um, so the location X we're just going to push that down and there we go so that is what I want so we can now take this brick texture and we can take the color and put that into the normal now we need to convert it to normal data so we're going to press shift a and add a bump node. So you wanna use the bump map node if you're just converting any old thing into a bump that you're gonna put into the normal. If you're using a proper normal map texture, then you're gonna use the normal map. So the normal map is used for just like regular textures, but if you're just using something like a brick texture and you wanna turn it into a bump, then you're gonna use the bump node. Now I don't want it to be plugging into the normal, I wanna plug it into the height. So now you can see that's actually normal data, and if I control shift and click on this, you can see it is is like a fake bump but it looks like there are some metal slats on the door so that is cool it gives a really cool sci-fi look and then also let's turn the metallic all the way up to one so it is a metal material we can also turn the roughness down so it's more shiny and then also the base color i want to turn that down a little bit so it's a darker metal and that is looking really cool now I want to add a little bit of grunge as well, so we're going to add the surface imperfections. So I'm going to press Shift A, we're going to search for an image texture, and then right on the drop down, we can actually start to type in surface, and you can see here's the surface imperfections that we were already using. Uh, we used it in the other part of the tutorial, links in the description if you'd like to download it and add it in. So let's just control shift and click on this to preview it. Now we need to UV unwrap this so that the surface imperfections can actually be placed on the door. So look at the door from straight on. We're going to tab into edit mode and I'm just going to press U to unwrap and we are just going to wrap project from view. So we're just going to unwrap it from our view and there we go. Now you can see there's the surface imperfections and then let's also press control T on the surface imperfections. That's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And if we want to scale this, you can click, drag down, and then drag back and forth just to scale it. I do want to scale it up a little bit. All right, that is looking good. And then we're just going to take this and we're going to plug it into the base color. Now, this isn't going to look very good right now. Um, so what we can do is we can press Shift A and just search for a color ramp and we can tell it what colors we want it to be. So now I can control shift and click on this. So the black tab, this one, I just want to make like the metal color. So I'm just going to turn it up, kind of make it like a gray color and then maybe make it just slightly a tannish color. And then the surface imperfections, like all the smudge and the dirt, uh, we want to make the, that a dark color. 
and we can also drag it over if you want to be able to see it better. Maybe just make it like a dark brown. All right, something like that is pretty good. So we can now control shift and click on this. And there we go. So now it has just a little bit of grunge. And I think I might turn this up and maybe turn this down or bring it in a little bit just so you can see it slightly better. So there we go, just a simple door material. I do think it looks pretty cool. And then I am gonna click back over here on the house material. There is one more thing that I wanna do. I just wanna add a noise texture and add that into the bump just to make it more random, just make it more interesting. Um, so I'm gonna press shift A here, search for a noise texture, not the white noise, just the regular noise texture. We'll put that down here. And then we do wanna use the object mapping. So we'll plug the mapping into the vector right here. So let's just control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. The detail I'm going to turn all the way up to 16 so it's very detailed. You could also turn up the roughness just a little bit if you wanted to. And then I'll turn the scale down. So we now have all that detail. And then what I want to do is plug that into the normal. So I'm going to press shift A. We're going to search for a bump and we'll just drop the bump right in here. So the normal is going into the normal. And then to add this in with the other bump we're going to plug the noise texture into the height. So you can see here it is with just the regular texture and then here is the added noise texture. We'll just wait for it to load up so you can see here it is. Now we probably wanna turn the strength down a bit cause it is a little bit strong, but now you can control shift and click on this and let's wait for it to load up. I'm just gonna go into rendered view so you can see here it is without and then if you just add it in here it is with it. So it just adds a little bit more noise all over the place and I think it makes it look nicer. I think I want to change the scale though to a little bit smaller because it is a little bit big. And if you wanted to, you could also turn the detail down because with how high it is right now, it's almost just like you can't see it. If you want to turn the detail down, now you can really start to see that if you turn the strength up. So if you want to do that, you can. I'm just going to turn the strength down because I don't want it to be quite that high, but just adding a little bit more noise all over the place, I think really helps. All right, so let's go back into the layout here. So we can now place the house. So I'm just going to click on the house, shift click on the door. We'll go to top view, seven for top view. I'm just going to press G to grab, R to rotate, and let's just stick it into place. So I'm going to go into the camera view, we'll press G and Z, just kind of bring it down and stick it into the sand. And we need to move it quite a bit farther out. And I think it is also too big. The house is too big right now. So I will just bring that down. And getting the scale right for everything is really important. So I'm gonna show you a cool way that you can check the scale for everything. So what I'm gonna do is go edit and then go to the preferences. And then on the search here, you can just start to type in rig and you can see that there's this rigging rigify. So just turn that on and then I can just close the user preferences. So now that we have that add-on turned on, if you just press shift A and go down here to armature, you can see that there is a human meta rig. So if you add this, I'm just gonna press period on the number pad to zoom over to it. So it just basically adds in a human rig it just adds in some bones. So because these are bones, they're not actually gonna show up in the render, but we can make him the size that we want for the rest of our scene. And then we can just compare it to make sure everything is the correct size. So let's just uh, move this over here and I'm just going to make it the size that I want. So that's actually great. If you wanna scale up the house bigger or smaller or the person, that's how big I want it. So what we can do is just kind of put this guy right here next to the door and then I can press shift D to duplicate and put him also over here. So then we can compare these two and make the size correct. So let's just move this down, move him down there onto the ground, make sure he's just going right through the ground. So I'm just going to click on the controller of this and then we'll just press S to scale and scale it down. Now I do want this to be pretty big, probably about double the size of the person. Uh, something like that I think is pretty good, maybe even just a little bit bigger because I do want this to be a pretty big object. Um, in the screenshots from Star Wars, they did seem to be pretty big, maybe even bigger than this. So you can just scale it to whatever size you like. But this way, when we add the other houses, you can just use these characters to compare because this is gonna be about one person size. So you can also like duplicate this and move it over here and maybe move another one here, just so that when you're in the camera view, you can kind of get a good idea of how big the scene needs to be. So you can see that is how big a person's going to be. And this will also be helpful when we're creating the other house, which we're gonna do right now. So just press Control S to save, and then let's create the other house. So to make the second house, I'm gonna press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor. And then I'll press Shift A, let's go to a mesh. And this time I'm gonna add a UV sphere. This is gonna be kind of like the classic house. Like if you think of like Luke Skywalker's house in Star Wars. So let's scale this up and then I'll press G and Z and bring it up. We can just 
model it up here so it's kind of out of the way. I'm going to press 1 to go to the front view and let's tab into edit mode. Let's also press Z and move your mouse over to go into wireframe and deselect everything. And then we can just press B for the box select and we're just going to select all the bottom vertices and then I'll just press X and delete vertices. I'm now going to hold down the Alt key and select this loop, this bottom loop here, and I'm going to press E to extrude and we will just bring it down. And something like that is pretty good. So let's tab back into object mode and let's also uh, shade this object smooth. So I also need to make those like parts that are coming out where you know you'd walk out with like the front door. So I'm going to press shift A and for this I'm going to add a circle. And then on the circle settings the vertices right here I want to change this to 32 just so that there's some more vertices and we can just close this now. So I'll press G and Z will bring it up and then also press G to grab and Y on the Y axis. We'll just bring this over. Let's tab into edit mode and then I want to rotate this over. So I'm going to press R to rotate x on the x-axis we'll type in 9 0 and enter so it's rotated over i'll press 1 to go to the front view and z to go to wireframe and then let's just uh box select this and then i'll press x and we're going to delete the vertices so now i just need to box select these ones right here and then i'll press e to extrude z on the z-axis and we will just bring that down and then I'm going to double tap a to select everything we can just go back over here and I'm just going to bring it in and then I'm going to press e to extrude y on the y-axis we'll just bring it out and just something like that all right and then we need to select everything and press shift n to recalculate the normals now I want to add some thickness to this so let's click on add modifier and we're going to add the solidify modifier and then we can just turn the thickness value up to make it nice and thick so something like that is pretty good and then again I also want to add the bevel modifier so I'm going to click on add modifier here and then let's just add the bevel modifier just so that we can bevel out the edges and it'll look very smooth so I'm going to turn the amount down just turn that amount down and then we can also turn the segments up quite a bit just to maybe three or four and then just turn the amount down and then if you need to turn the angle up you can but it looks like it's working because I don't want this to have a bevel I just want these parts around here to have a bevel but not the part up here so we can now just shade this smooth and that looks really great so I want to duplicate this and have one over here as well so I'm going to press seven for top view we can press shifty to duplicate bring it over here and then R to rotate I'm going to type in nine is zero and enter and then G to grab and just move it over just like that. All right, and then right here, I actually want to fill this because I don't really want to have a door here. So I'm going to go to the solidify and just press X to delete the solidify. And then I can just hold down the Alt key, select this entire loop with the Alt key, and then I can just press F to fill a face there. All right, that is great. Uh, that is looking good. Now, if you need to, or if you want to, you can like bring it up or down. You could also scale it. Just look at reference images and get it to how you like. I think I will move this one over a little bit. I do think I want to scale these both down a little bit though, just because I don't think they're supposed to be quite that big. Maybe move them a little bit more away from each other. Also, you can go to top view and just move them around. All right, that is good. So now what I want to do is I kind of want to add a little bit of a ledge right here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'll press control R. And just click and we'll add like a little ledge there and then I'm going to press 3 for the face select I'm just gonna hold down the alt key and select this face and then I will press E to extrude and then immediately after that press S to scale and then again I don't want to scale it up and down I just want to scale it out so I'm gonna press shift Z so it can only be scaled on the X and the Y just bring that out and then click to place that all right now I want to add some more geometry to smooth this out so I'm going to click on add modifier and we can add the subdivision surface modifier and the levels and viewport I'm going to turn that up to two I can now tab into edit mode and I'm going to press Control R click drag down to add a loop cut there to kind of sharpen that up Control R click drag out Control R click and drag in just to sharpen up those edges and then Control R click and bring that down and control R we'll just bring that up all right there we go so now we kind of have this ledge around the entire thing and then let's add the material so I'm going to click on it we're going to go over to the material properties and I'm going to click right here and we're going to click on the house let's uh, go into the material preview just so that we can see this and there we go now we can also just drop the material onto these ones as well so what you can do is click on this click and drag and drop it and then click and drag and drop it 
Now you may have noticed something and that is that the scale of this texture is bigger and the scale of this texture is smaller. And that's because we need to apply the scale of our object. So we're gonna do that. But first let's just shift select all of the objects and then we're going to move the house into place and just scale it to the correct size. So I'm gonna press G to grab. R to rotate, we're just gonna move this over and just kinda stick it next to this house and we'll also scale it down. We can also go into the camera view and just move it down into the ground and then I'll press R to rotate, Z on the Z axis and just kinda move it over. So I just wanna move it over like that and then we can also bring this over as well. Maybe scale this up because I do want this doorway to be about the same size as that doorway. So I think I'll scale the whole house up a little bit. And then I do want to select all of the houses and just kind of move them over a little bit just so that we can see them in the camera view a little bit better. I'm just going to select one of these characters and just press shift D and move it over just so I can kind of see the scale. And you can see that's like a little bit small, so I want to make that bigger. So I'm just going to shift select the house and just scale it up and bring it up a little bit. And I think I want to scale all the houses up in general, just all the houses, because if I go into the camera view, that's kind of a little bit small. It's not filling very much of the space of the image. So I'm just going to select all the houses, make sure all the different pieces are selected, and then I'll just scale them all up and just kind of move them into the scene a little bit more. All right, that is looking very nice. And then you can move these characters around just to see what you think about the scale. That is totally great. That looks fine. I do think these doors should just be moved up a little bit higher so that you could just walk into them. All right, that is good. And then we might as well move the moisture evaporator now as well. So I'm just gonna select the controller of it and press G to grab and move it over. So as far as composition goes, I'm thinking about the rule of thirds because the rule of thirds really is quite good. It's a great thing to follow. So this is gonna be the main thing we're gonna be looking at, the main focus. And then this over here will be less in focus. I'm also gonna give it a random rotation and maybe move it slightly over. And then let's go ahead and make the third building. So the third building, I want just to be kind of like, almost like a barn or something. It's just gonna be like a big dome coming up. So let's press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor. I'm gonna press Shift A, and again, I'm going to add a UV sphere. Let's scale the UV sphere up and kind of bring it up here. And then I will tab into edit mode. We're gonna press Z to go into wireframe, and we can just box select this and we'll just delete the vertices. I can now alt select this and I want to make kind of like an inset before it goes down. So I'm going to press E to extrude, S to scale will bring it down and then I'll press E to extrude, Z on the Z axis, just click to place that and then I can press E and S, scale it up and then just press E to extrude and bring it down. So that is basically the look that we're getting. I want to tab into edit mode though and select everything and press S and Z and just kind of flatten it a little bit because I think it would look better if it's a little bit more flat. And then just like all the other objects, I'm going to shade this smooth. And then over here on the modifiers, let's add the bevel modifier, just like on the other objects. Let's turn the segments up to maybe like a four, and then we'll also turn the amount down quite a bit. And then let's just shade this flat again. Uh, you can turn the angle up if you need to, but that is looking good. So I will just shade this smooth. All right, so there we go. Let's go to the top view. We're just going to move this over and this little dome thing. I'm going to just bring it down here and I just want to put it behind this building. So just something like that. Um, I do want it to be a little bit higher though, quite a bit higher actually. So like that. And then if it's floating, you can just go into edit mode and you can just alt select this ring of vertices and then press G to grab Z on the Z axis and just put it into the ground. Now for the materials, we're going to need to add this material to it. And then I also want to apply the scale so that the size is the same, because you can see we still have that issue with the sizes being a little bit different. So if you just select this object, you can click and drag on the material and just drop it onto this object. So there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is just shift select all of these objects, and then I'm going to press control A and I want to apply the scale. So now that I've applied the scale, you can see everything looks way too small, but we can easily fix that just by going into the materials and scaling it up. But now the textures on all the different objects are gonna be the same size, so that will look good. So let's just go right over here to the shading tab and then let's just zoom in here. So the mapping right here on the house material, we can just click on the scale, drag down and then drag left and right. And it's just going to change the scale of it. So something like that is probably pretty good. 
So we can go back into the layout now. Now I also want to duplicate this dome and move it over here just that so we have a second dome just because I think it would look nice to make like the town or the city or something a little bit bigger. Maybe it's not a city, maybe it's just like a homestead or a farm or something, but I think adding another one of these would look nice. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and move it over. And then I just want to kind of bring it right there and also go to top view, maybe just move it a little bit farther back. I think that is pretty good. Let's go into rendered mode and see how this is looking. Now, I don't know if this was happening for you or not, but you can see that this looks kind of like dark bluish purple. And that is because I don't know if this happened for you, but if you go right over here to the shading tab and then go back to the world. So right here from the object, go to world. You can see that I had the node wrangler. I uh, was previewing this one and we actually need to preview the mix shader. So I'm just gonna click on that and there we go. Now the lighting is correct. So you can see this in the background, but then actually the light, the objects are going to interact with this HDRI. So I don't know if that was happening for you. I just uh, used the node wrangler and control shift and clicked on the wrong one. So if you were having that problem, just control shift and click on the mix shader and now the lighting is correct. So I'm gonna go back to the object right here and then we can also just go back to the layout. And then we might as well just set the depth of field. I think that would be pretty cool. So let's do that. So I'm gonna select the camera right here. You can just select the camera, go to the camera settings and then right down here you can see there is this depth of field. So I'm gonna turn this on and then the focus object, I'm gonna click on the eyedropper and we're going to select this uh, water collector right here. So we can now go into rendered mode. Now you can see the f-stop value if you turn this really far down it's going to blur everything else and just focus on that so if you want to do that you could um, I don't want it to be that blurred I'm just gonna set this to maybe a one for starters and that is still a little bit too blurry so let's maybe set it to like a two all right that is pretty good so now you can see if I just go into the camera view, you can see it's getting slightly blurry, but it's still pretty in focus. Now right here on the ground, you can see it's quite bright right here. And I believe that's because of this sunlight because where it's pointing. So if you want to, you could move it around like you could change where it is just to make it a little less glaring. What I wanna do is I wanna make it look like there's another house right here. So there's gonna be a shadow right here. So what I'm gonna do is just select this house right here. And then I will press Shift D to duplicate and just move it over. And I'm gonna need to go into rendered mode to see how this is looking. So I wanna scale this house up and just move it so that it's making a shadow right there in the corner of the scene. So if I make it bigger, there we go, that's what I'm kind of going for. So you can see I just want a little bit of a shadow there just to make it look like there's another house uh, pretty nearby. And then you could also, again, just rotate the sun lamp if you wanna rotate that. Something like that looks pretty good. So there we go, there's just a little bit of a shadow there and I think that looks nice. All right, so we are almost done with part three of the tutorial series. What I wanna do though is duplicate these moisture collectors and just kind of put them some different places and then we will be done with part three. So I'm just gonna go right back out here to solid view. What I'm gonna do is just uh, press B for the box select and just box select uh, this object and then we don't wanna select the ground so you can just press B and then click and hold with your mouse wheel and just deselect that. So just make sure this is what's selected and then I wanna duplicate them and move them around. So the first one, I'll just press seven for top view. I wanna duplicate this, so I'll press shift D to duplicate and I wanna put this one kind of in between where these two houses are. So I'll put it kind of right there and then we can also just bring it down so it's going into the ground and then you can press R to rotate, Z on the Z axis and just give it a random rotation so it looks a bit more natural, just kind of like it was placed there. All right, I'm gonna press Shift D again. Let's press seven for top view. This one, I wanna make it way over here, kind of like on this hill. So there's like a hill right here. So I wanna put it right there and then press G and Z. We'll just bring this one up a little bit. You can kind of rotate it if you need to. And it's okay if it's kind of being buried a little bit in the sand. I think that actually looks a little bit realistic. So. I don't mind that. And then you can also press R to rotate, give it a random rotation. And then I just wanna have one more kind of right over here in the distance. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate. Let's press seven for top view. And this one, I just wanna move right over here on this hill. So let's just move it to the spot that we want, kind of like right there, move it over. Now I wanna give it the illusion that it's like farther away. You can see how big it is. That's actually kind of big. I wanna make it look like it's really far away. So I'm actually gonna kind of cheat with the scale and just kind of scale it down and make it look like it's farther away. Go into the camera view, let's just see how that's looking. Something like that is pretty good, okay. And then we can just kind of rotate this, give it a random rotation. 
if you want to and just stick it into the sand. All right, and with that done, this is gonna wrap it up for part three of the tutorial series. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful so far and I hope you've been enjoying the series. So in part four, we're gonna be making all those other little sci-fi things. We're gonna be making like the sci-fi barrel. We're also gonna make some little like antennas coming out of the houses. And then we're also gonna make some like sci-fi boxes and just kind of put them around the scene. And we'll also be making some pipes and we'll be having the pipes kind of come out of the houses as well. So if you wanna join me for part four, the next part, I'm gonna leave it in the end screen right up there. You can just click on it and go and watch it. I'll be uploading one part each day, as I said earlier. And also there'll be a link in the description to part four you can go over and watch that. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in part four.